What's up, Sandals Church family? My name is Joelle, and I'm your online host. And I'm so happy you're here today because we're in a series called Here. Now, in this series, we're looking at Jesus's final moments before his death, his crucifixion, and what happened afterward, and what that means for you. Now, today, you're going to hear the most important story as a follower of Jesus. Let's get started. We are here for an event called Jurassic Quest. Now, we don't know everything about it, but I know the word Jurassic probably has something to do with dinosaurs, and Quest probably has something to do with some super cool adventures. Let's check it out. I like all types of dinosaurs, big and small, ones that can fly, ones that can swim, but one of my favorites is actually a Carnosaurus. It's pretty much like a T-Rex. But there's definitely one thing that makes the Carnotaurus a lot weaker than the T-Rex. It's his tiny little arms. Man, there's no way he can swim. Oh my goodness! Whew, okay. I just need a breather. Plus it's like really loud in there. Did you guys see all the different dinosaurs? There was a dinosaur toy store, some balloons that you could buy. There were dinosaurs that you can ride. And also, I got to actually touch a dinosaur fossil. The fossil I touched is called Corpulite. Does anybody know what Corpulite is? Yeah, I didn't either until I touched it. It's fossilized dinosaur poop. I'll be back. I'm gonna go wash my hands. All right. If I had to pick maybe one of my favorite things I saw here, I'd have to say the Utah Raptor. The reason I like this, it kind of looks like a cross between a bear and a dinosaur. That's just crazy. Now let me tell you something. A few hundred years ago, there was a guy named Richard Owen who found the very first dinosaur fossil. He got to name what those fossils were called because he was the first one to discover it. Dinosaur means terrible lizard. Now here's the deal. That means if you guys discover something that nobody else has found, you get to give it a name. We'll see you next time, guys. All right, guys, that pre-show video was so much fun. Now we're gonna enter into a time of worship and sing a couple songs together, and then we're gonna get into the Bible story. But first, if you have it, click the download button below and print out the items on there. One of them is your Get Real Guide, and that is gonna be your key to following the Bible story. All right, guys, let's start worshiping. We were impossibly far away from God, away from God. There was nothing that we could do to reach Him, to reach perfection. We were impossibly far away from God, away from God. There was only one thing that He could do. God should.
one who listened I looked down at the ground But you held my head up high When I was afraid You were the one who gave me strength There were no arms around me But you were holding me you were there when I was on my own I was weak but then you made me strong You were there when I'm all alone You were here, you were here, you were here with me You were here, you were here, you were here with me You were here, you were here Stretched out, you were holding me. You were there when I was on my own. I was weak, but then you made me strong. You were there when I'm all alone. You were here, you were here, you were here with me. You were here, you were here. You I might not see you like I want to see you You're so much bigger than I think you are I might not see you like I want to see you But you're always with me You're never far away, far away, far away You're never far away Hey everyone, today we're talking about the most essential extreme event in human history from our story in Matthew 27. Welcome to our series called Here, where we're following Jesus during Holy Week. Today is the day that we get a front row seat to see exactly how Jesus died and why it's the most important event in all of history. We're gonna see how Jesus loved instead of left when faced with the most painful death. And today we're doing something completely different. So what we need from you is some extra good listening and paying close attention. So listen to your host on how to get into your group and let's check it out right here. Last week, we left off in our story with Jesus being betrayed and arrested. Let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 27 to see what happens next. So Jesus has been taken to a guy named Pilate, an important Roman leader. Pilate judged Jesus and told the angry crowd of people that Jesus wasn't guilty of anything. But the crowd just chanted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate eventually gave up and the Roman soldiers took Jesus. They put a crown made of thorns on Jesus' head and dressed him like a king so they could make fun of him and beat him. Then they forced Jesus to carry his heavy cross to where he would die. He was nailed to the cross by his hands and feet and hung up so that he had to lift himself just to take a single breath. As he was in terrible pain, he was mocked and made fun of by the religious leaders who told him to save himself. All of a sudden, the day grew very dark. Jesus' followers and even his mom, Mary, 
watched as he hung on the cross, being tortured right in front of them. They were heartbroken. Then Jesus gasped and took his last breath, and he died. There was a great earthquake, and the special curtain in the temple that represented the separation between God and men was torn in two from top to bottom. Jesus was taken by a friend to be prepared and buried in the tomb. Look, Jesus didn't die just on accident. He died as a sacrifice for us to take the consequence that we deserve. Only God could give a sacrifice that would take sin or what separates us from God away. Only God can forgive our sins because our sins are against Him. If our sins weren't forgiven, we would have to take the consequence or punishment by dying a terrible death. The amazing thing is that God loves us enough to die for us. That's why He sent His Son Jesus to earth. The one thing to remember is that Jesus is here to die in your place. So maybe you think that your little sin isn't really that bad. I mean, people do way worse things than you, right? Well, not really. All sin is the same to God. And even your tiny little sin makes it so that you can't have a friendship with God anymore. God created you to be perfect and without sin. You were made to be in the image of God, like a picture of who He is. But you and I and all of us have messed up with our sin. When we sin, we choose to go against God and what He has asked of us. So maybe you think that your little sin isn't really that bad. I mean, people do way worse things than you, right? Well, not really. All sin is the same to God. And even your tiny little sin makes it so that you can't have a friendship with God anymore. God created you to be perfect and without sin. You were made to be in the image of God, like a picture of who He is. But you and I and all of us have messed up with our sin. When we sin, we choose to go against God and what He has asked of us. Once that happens, we can never go back. We aren't even able to have life because we have chosen to cut ourselves off from the God who gives us life. Instead, we have death and we live life without God as the consequence. I do have some good news for you. The Bible tells us more of the story in Romans 5, 8, and it says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. The us we are talking about is all of us. Each and every one of us has sinned. That's why Jesus was here to die in your place. God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus down to earth to free us from our sin. Jesus offered to be the sacrifice that stands in our place to pay the consequence for our sin. He died on the cross even though he was perfect and freed us from the sin that takes away life and God. Jesus is here to die in your place. So guys, you have a choice to make. You can choose to keep your sin, or you can choose Jesus, the God who loves you and died in your place to free you from sin. The Bible says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God asks us to decide to follow him on the inside and on the outside. And the choice is yours. It's one you decide to make for the rest of your life. No one can make you choose, not your parents or your small group leader or your friends or me. Only you can decide. Will you choose Jesus? We have a special page for you. And on the first part, you're gonna have a chance to write or draw your confession. So a confession just means that you're being real with yourself and admitting that you have sin and that the consequence is death and separation from God. Next, I want you guys to take a minute in quiet prayer and get real with God about how you need Him. Then, I want you guys to pick one box to fill in. You can choose to follow Jesus for the very first time, or you can choose to keep following Jesus if you're already a Christian, or you can choose to keep asking some more questions about why you need God 
or about the things you might not understand yet. You can pick any choice you want and all of them are okay. Write or draw a little bit about why you chose that answer. And lastly, you can choose to be real with others and pick one person to tell about your decision today. Your small group leader and your parents are both great choices for that. Guys, I love you so much and I'm so excited for you. I've had so much fun today being your online host. Now, you might have noticed that when you click the download button earlier, there was an extra item on there for you to print. This is called our decision card. Now, we suggest that you grab your parent and go through the card together. You guys, again, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time.